How's it going, YouTube? My name is LB Ninja 7 your resident Mistweaver monk, and welcome to 10.2 Mistweaver. Today's video is going to be a guide going over all the new things coming to Mistweaver and just going over how to jump in and start playing Mistweaver and Mythic Plus. With all of the buffs coming to Mistweaver, I know it's an exciting time to play it, so I want to make this video very informational to new players and to returning players alike. So we're going to be talking about the base rotations, everything that you need to know to get in to start playing Mistweaver, and the changes in optimal rotation since all the buffs have kind of tweaked our numbers a bit. So the first thing that we're going to go over is stat weights. So as a Mistweaver Monk, the first number that you want to shoot for is 30% haste. This will give you more cast per minute, allowing you to react faster, do more damage, do more healing. It's overall just a great stat, and it will buff your Chigi windows or your little ramp windows to let you have more casts or more button presses during those windows. And then next up, you want to push your crit up toward 30%. It's not as important as haste is in Mythic Plus, but crit provides a lot of healing to us when we have to stop fist weaving to cast a vivify having your spot healing vivifies crit will allow you to just get more healing off in an instant having your expel harms crit yourself will just allow yourself to stay alive easier top yourself up quicker so crit is overall just a great stat for healing mastery and verse are also great stats too now that we're tankier than we used to be or just you know more resilient than we used to be verse you don't really have to push it as much as you used to if you ever wanted to push high keys so keeping this stat as your third priority is a great option because once again it buffs your damage makes you a little bit more sustainable and also does scale your healing and then mastery is still a good uh stat it only provides healing though and in mythic plus you know damage is always great to have but you'll primarily only see mastery give any bonus at all in your chigi windows because of all the mastery procs you kick up now after stat weights i always like to talk about talents i'll try to keep this quick but there is a lot of changes a lot of new stuff on this talent tree let's go and jump into it so let's talk about your utility first. What kind of utility do you have? You do have a kick and spear hand strike. You can also use paralysis to as a backup kick if you ever need to, or to just CC a mob, keep them out of combat. You also have leg sweep as an AOE stun if you ever need it, and, and as a backup AOE boop or a movement or booping things out of Sanguine. You have ring of peace which just boops everything out from the center of it. As far as defensiveness, you have a lot of good passive talents. So Healing Elixir is now passive. It will proc once you go below a certain threshold of health. That couples very well, although it's not as powerful as it used to be, it couples very well with Bounce Back, which is now a very strong talent. About every 30 seconds, give or take, you're just gonna get a free defensive for six seconds. It's 40% damage mitigation, very powerful. So you're definitely gonna want both points in this talent. You're going to be giving your whole group uh, less AoE damage from Generous Port. You'll take two defensives and basically two and a half defensives with Fortifying Brew. It's it's not the best button. It's a four minute defensive. So you can cycle that really well with the two minute cooldown and Dampen and Harm. This is for bigger spikier damage. And then on top of that, you also have another passive rolling shield that's just going to be scaling off of your own health, giving you an absorb shield to make you yourself tankier. Next up, you have more passive reduction and calming presence, just making yourself a little bit more tanky versus big hits. And then expel harm. You take all three of the expel harm talents because expel harm saw a massive buff for Mistweavers. It does a ton of healing, but as you see here on the meters, it does a lot of healing that Expel Harm does. So that is great. You know, once you take a big hit, you'll get an el a healing elixir proc and your bounce back proc, and then you can just Expel Harm yourself, get a big burst self heal and stay alive. And then the last thing that I want to talk about is your Celestial Harmony. That bottom line there, it says that when you activate your Yulon or Chiji, which in Mythic Plus, we're going to be taking Chiji, you will apply a a large shield to your entire group it's not a defensive it's not like aura mastery but it is our way as a misweaver to extend the whole party's health bar kind of like how a mage can put a barrier on everyone now as i always do in these in these guide videos i like to talk about your damage first before your actual spot healing because you actually do a lot of healing through your damage with things like Awakened Feyline makes your, your spinning crane kick heal as long as you're on your Feyline. Your Ancient Teachings, as long as you buff yourself with Ancient Teachings by either pressing Essence Font or in most cases Feyline Stomp, you'll just buff yourself so your Tiger Palm, Blackout Kick, and Rising Sun Kick do healing to allies around you. And then also Rising Mist. If you have Hots or your heals over time on your allies, Rising Mist will extend those Hots for a certain duration while also procking a small little helpful heal on everyone that has that hot. 
So your notable talents for damage are Awaken Feline. Like I said, this does make your Feline Stomp heal. However, this also buffs your Feline. As long as you're standing on your Feline, your Tiger Palms will strike twice. And this talent here, Ancient Concordance, makes your Blackout Kicks cleave onto three targets and give your Blackout Kicks an additional chance to buff or to, to reset the cooldown of your Rising Sun Kicks. So this talent primarily makes your Feline Stomp very important to stand on during AoE scenarios so you get that, that Spinning Crane Kick value. And on single target scenarios, it makes it even more worth it because your Tiger Palms will hit twice. This talent really locks in the fact that, guys, I'm trying to nail it into your head. Stand on your Feline because your Blackout Kicks cleaving will lead to a ton of damage while also leading to a ton of healing with things like Ancient Teachings. And then every Tiger Palm that you press will cause your next Blackout Kick to hit an additional time. This does stack with your Blackout Kick cleaving. So if I Tiger Palm and then Blackout Kick, that Blackout Kick will hit two times. But if I'm hitting three targets it'll hit all three targets two times so if you stack this up if you tiger palm four times and you're hitting three targets you'll get four additional blackout kicks on all three targets so in total that'll equal 15 blackout kicks for one press you also get a lot of benefit, especially now from things like Rapid Diffusion. Every time you Rising Sun Kick or Envelopy Mist, which now we're talking about Rising Sun Kick, you're just gonna spawn a little small short duration Renewing Mist on an ally. And that's very important to work with our tier set. So our tier set says our two piece, whenever we Renewing Mist someone, and that Renewing Mist does count from Rapid Diffusion, you're gonna apply a buff to them. That buff will increase the healing that they receive from you by 50% for eight seconds. And while they have that buff, any healing that you do to them, a fifth of that healing will be stored. And once that buff goes away, it'll pop and heal anyone else that has Renewing Mist on them. So it's very important to make sure that you're pressing Rising Sun Kick on cooldown in almost every scenario because you're just going to be spreading Renewing Mist, spreading those Chi Harmonies. And as long as you keep that cycle going of keep pressing uh, Rising Sun Kick, you're going to extend the Renewing Mists as well so that they're still there by the time that Chi Harmony pops. And you're just going to get a lot of healing increase from just simply pressing your Rising Sun Kick on cooldown. So what does your DPS rotation look like? Well, number one rule, I always say it, you wanna be on your Feyline Stomp 100% of the time because this will give you the Ancient Teachings buff making your Blackout Kicks, Rising Sun Kicks heal your allies around you while also making your Spinning Crane Kicks heal allies around you. So it's very important to stay on your Feyline. One important note is that Ancient Teachings, although it expires making your single target uh, damaging abilities not heal anymore, as long as your Feyline persists and stays on the ground, you can still get the Awakened Feyline bonus of your Spinning Crane Kicks healing. So if you're about to kill a pack, you run out of your Ancient Teachings buff and uh, you're about to move to a next pack, you don't want to waste your cooldown of Feyline Stomp because you know you're about to be on the move. It's fine to just stay on that existing Feyline and just spinning crank it for the end of a pack. But all of that out of the way, what does your damage rotation look like? Well, we've seen a lot of tweaks, a lot of buffs to our damage rotation. And in the past, we used to spinning crank kick for maximum damage capabilities at four or more targets. But nowadays, since Blackout Kick and Rising Sun Kick and Tiger Palm even saw so many buffs, that number will be pushed up by one to five or more targets. So five or more targets, if your goal is to maximize damage, which a lot of times, since most of your healing comes from your damage, you will want to maximize your damage. At five or more targets, you will want to spinning crane kick for damage. Not to mention, since Feyline Stomp actually got its damage buff, if you know that you're gonna be staying stationary and, and like your tank is fully done pulling mobs into a certain spot, it is 100% okay to Feyline Stomp for damage nowadays since it does so much damage and that will maximize or optimize your damage. So five or more mobs, Feyline Stomp and Spinning Crane Kick is, is just an easy rotation to do big damage and big healing. Anything less than that, so four or less mobs, even down to one target, your rotation is very simple. Is Rising Sun Kick ready? If so, press it. If not, press Blackout Kick. And then if both of those buttons aren't available, press Tiger Palm. 
So that will look like this. So you're gonna Feline Stomp, number one rule, Feline Stomp. And once again, since Feline Stomp does so much damage now, on, on that few targets, your Feline Stomp is very optimal for damage right underneath your Rising Sun Kick. So what will that rotation look like? Well, number one, we wanna make sure that we have our Ancient Teachings buff in the first place. So we're gonna Feline Stomp, Rising Sun Kick, Blackout Kick. It reset the cooldown, so we're gonna Rising Sun Kick again, Blackout Kick, it's still resetting. I'm getting so lucky. And since there was a, a, a brief second where Rising Sun Kick and Blackout Kick were off cooldown or on cooldown, I Tiger Palmed, but now we have all of our buttons. So Feline Stomp, Rising Sun Kick, Rising Sun Kick, Blackout Kick. This will optimize your rotation. Now, very important to note is now your Tiger Palms, they always hit twice if you're on your Feline, but your Tiger Palms actually stack up your next Blackout Kick. So if you Tiger Palm, your next Blackout Kick will hit twice but if you're on your fey line if you press tiger palm that tiger palm is going to hit twice and then your next blackout kick will hit three times and now the big change to this talent is that if you tiger palm four times your next blackout kick can hit five times so that used to be moved down once it could only stack up to three times but that means that as long as you're on your fey line if you tiger palm tiger palm blackout kick it'll hit, that blackout kick will hit 15 total times. So if you don't necessarily need the bonus healing that Rising Sun Kick applies, maybe a pack is not doing any damage to you, you just wanna maximize the damage that you're doing, it is totally fine to skip out on Rising Sun Kick in those scenarios. The main reason why it's good practice to keep Rising Sun Kick in your rotation is because of all the additional healing benefits that it applies. It extends your hots, it applies a Renewing Mist, which then will proc your two-piece tier set and apply a Chi Harmony. So all in all, just very good healing value in Rising Sun Kick. But once again, your Blackout Kick Cleaving is your main draw to your damage in those cleaving scenarios. So it is totally fine to skip out on Rising Sun Kick if, if the given scenario doesn't call for bonus healing that you need. So just pressing Blackout Kick, Tiger Palm, Blackout Kick, Tiger Palm, Blackout Kick is totally fine but it is more optimal to Tiger Palm, Tiger Palm, Blackout Kick than to just do one Tiger Palm than Blackout Kick. It's just more optimal for damage because you just get more damage out of doing two Tiger Palm presses and then Blackout Kick, then one Tiger Palm press. Now, on top of our damage receiving buffs, we actually did see a lot of throughput buffs, a lot of healing buffs. The first notable one is that our Essence font did get buffed in five-man environments. It got buffed all around, but especially in five-man environments. You see there, it just does more healing, not just the hot, but the actual bolt itself will do more healing. So it's it's not it's still not that worth it to press since it's a longer channel. It still doesn't do like insane amounts of healing to where it's, it's just required you have to press it. And you can get through a dungeon without even pressing it once because Feyline kind of does its utility. It does apply Essence Font Hots to allies that it shoots through. So if you're playing as optimally as possible, you can get away with just shooting your Feyline through all of your allies if you ever do need the healing bonus that Essence Font gives and not have to press Essence Font at all still, even, even in its buffed state. However, let's go and talk about the cooldowns, and, and this is a time when Essence Font could be worth it to press. So our cooldowns are Chiji, Revival, and still Shailun's Gift. For those of you returning players, you are so used to these abilities, but they're very powerful, very, very strong five-man content abilities because Shailun's Gift, it's on a 40-second maximum recharge. So every four seconds since we're taking Veil of Pride while we're in combat, we're gonna spawn a, a little cloud of mist. And then once we actually cast Shailun's Gift, we're gonna suck in all of those clouds of mist and then heal based on how many we suck in. So right now you see here I have four stacks, but every four seconds it'll go up one, as long as I'm in combat. And then once we actually cast Shailun's Gift, it'll consume right now five stacks and do a big chunky heal. Now that heal is, it does scale up linearly. However, ideally you only press Shailun's Gift or it's only super optimal to press it when you have seven or more stacks, in most cases even eight or more stacks, which means that it is on average on a 32 to 40 second cooldown, but it can top up a group. So don't underestimate the amount of healing that this does. However, make sure that the target that you're casting on will not die by the time that you finish casting it because that happens very often. Make sure that you're casting it on the tank or the lowest health person that you know is not gonna die because it will save your group. 
Next up, I'll talk about Revival. Now, Revival does a, a, a nice spot heal on everyone, or, or not a spot heal, it just does a nice chunk heal to everyone. It's not super noticeable, but it is nice to weave in whenever you do need it. But its main use is to do that small amount of healing while also dispelling it. It acts as a mass dispel. So if big AoE damage applies something like a small dot, then Revival is your button because it'll mass dispel and do a nice little top you up heal. But it also procs your mastery. So this is what I was talking about. This is one of the, the reasons why I was mentioning Essence Font for your cooldown. Essence Font makes your mastery hit each target twice. So if you if you do need that bonus healing from your Revival, you could do something like Thunder Focus T buffing an Essence Font so it's very fast to channel. So Thunder Focus T, Essence Font, and then Revival. That way it'll just boost your Revival that much further, but it's really not that much of a bonus. That's just a tool that you could have under your belt if you ever do need that bonus healing from your Revival. Say you're caught with your pants down, your chi on cooldown, your Shailun's Gift just is only at like one or two stacks, and you need a burst of healing. That is definitely an option that you can press, but for the most part, Revival alone is fine to press. It's just not the strongest Mythic Plus cooldown, but Chi-Gi kind of is. So with Chi-Gi, we take the one minute cooldown version. Now I just released a, a full length video of just Chi-Gi because it, it can have different rotations while you're in your Chi-Gi. So go watch that, I'll have the, it down in the description below and that'll help you master Chi-Gi. However, this ability, when cycled with Shailun's Gift, you have a, a 40 second cooldown Shailun's Gift and a minute cooldown Chi-Gi, you can have a really nice cycle of these two short, big throughput cooldowns. Now, Chi-Gi is very powerful because it works with your kicks, but to put it simply for the sake of this video, you summon Chi-Gi alongside you for just 12 seconds, but you can do it once every minute, so very good uptime. And every time that you use one of your three kick abilities, so not Tiger Palm, but instead Rising Sun Kick, Spinning Crane Kick, and Blackout Kick, then you're gonna kick up two Gusts of Mist, which is your mastery proc. So you can do small little spot heals all over the place, and it will give you a stack of chi -Gi. So every stack of chi -Gi makes your next Enveloping Mist cost less mana and take less time to cast. So if you have three stacks of chi -Gi, It'll be a fully free on mana enveloping mist and then also an instant cast enveloping mist. So how this works is you want your kicks to hit three times or two times to, and then cast a very efficient enveloping mist, which is a strong hot that boosts the healing that you're doing to that target through how it actually reads. And also because your Chi Gi, every time that you cast an enveloping mist, Chi Gi is gonna splash enveloping breath onto them. So they're gonna get bonus healing from Chi Gi and bonus healing from the enveloping mist. And then on top of that, you're just kicking up a ton of mastery procs. So during your Chi Gi window, you're gonna do a ton of AOE healing. Really quick, what a Chi Gi rotation could look like is I'm gonna Feyline Stomp before I press Chi Gi. That way I don't have to refresh my buffs during that 12 second window because we wanna optimize the 12 seconds that Chi Gi's out alongside us. And then I'm gonna do a Thunder Focus Teed, either boosted Renewing Mist if I wanna apply a Chi Harmony on them and get a haste buff, or an Essence Font, if I just wanna have Essence Font rolling on everyone for sure, wanna have that boosted healing from those Chi-Gi Mastery procs and still get a haste bonus from Secret Infusion. And then I'm gonna make sure that I have full stacks of Teachings of the Monastery, so just as long as I'm on that Fey line, I just have to press Tiger Palm twice, and then once all that setup is done, I can press Chi-Gi, Chi-Gi's gonna apply a big shield to everyone, and then I can Blackout Kick, and if I have three targets to cleave off of, since I'm fully stacked on Teachings of the Monastery, it's gonna hit a ton of times, kick up a ton of masteries that are all gonna get doubled because everyone's hopefully gonna have Essence Font buff on them, and then just cycle Tiger Palm, blackout kick and then casting those free enveloping mess so let's go and jump into it. i'll just show you but once again i have a full video on this so we're gonna feyline tiger palm tiger palm and then do a boosted essence font for example summon chi -Gi, and then boom a big blackout kick ton of mastery procs and then enveloping mist and then blackout kick enveloping mist we can do this because we're hitting three targets every time that's kicking three times giving us three stacks if we need to extend the hots we can Rising Sun Kick, weave in Rising Sun Kicks in there to extend those hots. And just all in all, we're gonna kick up so many mastery procs, be able to spread Enveloping Mist to most of, if not the entire party, have haste rolling because we Thunder Focus Teed either Renewing Mist or Essence Font, and just do a ton of healing while Chi-Gi's out. Now let's go and talk about the spot healing. So we did receive buffs to our Enveloping Mist, which is our, our big hot that we apply. 
We received buffs to our Vivify, and we also received buffs to our Soothing Mist. So when do we even cast Soothing Mist in a Mythic Plus environment? The simple answer is, if you need to spot heal someone, so say your tank is just taking a pounding, and you need to cast more than one spell to heal them. So if they are like very low on health, you, you channel your Soothing Mist on them, you cast an Enveloping Mist, that'll boost the amount of healing that your other abilities do to them, and then you cast a Vivify, and if they're not topped up by then, then you can cast another Vivify. So your Soothing Mist just allows you to cast these two spells instant. And like I said, it's only efficient to press in Mythic Plus if you need to cast more than just one spell. If you just need to cast, say, your, your Vivify on someone, Hopefully you have your, your Vivacious Vivification proc ready, but if not, it's still just more efficient to just press Vivify than to press Soothing Mist than Vivify because it takes more time and it's just less efficient. Same with Enveloping Mist. If you just need to spread Enveloping Mist on certain members of your group before a big damage instance, then you just cast it. You hard cast it on them instead of Soothing Mist, Enveloping Mist. Soothing Mist, Enveloping Mist. And then one thing that I have not really talked about in this video is Chi Harmony. I do plan on making an entire in-depth guide on just what our tier set can do. However, you don't really change your playstyle in, in a Mythic Plus environment too much around this this buff except for just prioritizing rise, rising sun kick even more because of those rapid diffusion procs will apply a, a renewing mist and apply a chi harmony however it's important to note that not just your enveloping mist will buff the amount of healing that, that target will take by 40 percent but your renewing mist now buffs them by 50 percent since renewing mist applies chi harmony so if you really need to heal a tank or if you know a tank is coming up to a big pack you just want to make sure they're safe then renewing mist them and then uh, you can do your, your spam into them. Or just before a big pack, before you run up and start doing your damage, just apply your Renewing Mist to get those Chi Harmonies on people. And then any healing that you do during that pack will just be stored and then burst heal throughout that pool. And then if you're weaving in Rising Sun Kicks, you're going to make sure to keep those Renewing Mists on people. That Rising Sun Kick will then apply another Chi Harmony. So it's just, it's not super important to change your entire playstyle around Chi Harmony, but just know that there is a ton of power in Chi Harmony. I mean, 50% bonus healing, and then also a, a nice proc burst heal on your allies. So it is nice to know that this is a great way. If you're struggling on healing, if you know that this pack just always kills you, you just as a person can't keep up with a certain pack in a dungeon, just try applying your Renewing Mist before you come up to the pack and then make sure and weave in Rising Sun Kicks to apply more Chi Harmonies throughout the pool. You're going to get so much bonus healing from that. And then lastly, I want to talk about just a short little trick that could give you a nice little edge uh, and some big burst healing. So how Chi Harmony works is it actually it stores a percentage of the healing that you do to that target. So we can kind of game that in a way. If you think about it, if you do your biggest spot heals into that target, then that Chi Harmony will burst for even more. So what are your two biggest spot heals? Well, number one is Shailun's Gift. This is just a great way to get a lot of Chi Harmony healing. So if I Say I'm in a, a five-man group and I have a lot of Shailun's stacks and I know I'm about to cast Shailun's Gift. I can pre-apply my Renewing Mist to, to a target and then Shailun's Gift them. And then, yes, I'll do that big burst Shailun's Gift healing. But then a few seconds later, that Chi Harmony will burst and do more healing on anyone that just happens to have a Renewing Mist on them. So that's one way that you can game it. Just get a lot of value from that Chi Harmony. But another one is kind of cheesy. But now that they've buffed Expel Harm to do so much healing, let's reset our data. I mean, Expel Harm does big healing. You see there, it was even a small Expel Harm, and it was only a, it was already 130,000. What you can do is before you press Expel Harm to self-heal, or if you know that there's big AoE damage coming up and you want to store up a Chi Harmony just to have in 8 seconds, then you can Renewing Mist yourself and then Expel Harm. And then you've stored so much healing for just one global cooldown into that Chi Harmony, while also boosting the amount of healing that that, that Expel Harm did to yourself to make yourself uh, safer. So that is a way that you can kind of cheese your Chi Harmonies to get even more value out of it for very minimal effort. But Chi Harmony is not something that you need to, once again, just completely optimize. It is just a very large bonus that kind of will happen for free throughout a key. Just every Rising Sun Kick just applies one for free.
And then the last thing, the very last thing that I'm going to talk about in this video is Thunder Focus T. I always have to mention it in these guide videos because I always get the question, what should you use your Thunder Focus T on? And historically, that has always been in, in single target environments. You want to use it on your Rising Sun Kick because it'll just basically make you be able to press two Rising Sun Kicks in very quick succession, which will nowadays be even stronger because Rising Sun Kick's damage was buffed and it'll apply a Chi Harmony through Rapid Diffusion. But the other answers were a bit more more unclear in aoe environments it is totally fine to thunder focus t and enveloping mist on the tank why would you do that well number one it just buffs their healing so it's nice to have enveloping mist on the tank since they need more healing than everyone else but two it, it's a very efficient way to get a zen pulse off so i haven't really talked about this but this is a big aoe button that we can press every 30 seconds but it's only worth it to press if we can apply an enveloping mist before we press zen pulse so a good little two global cooldown button trick that you can press for big aoe damage is just thunder focus t enveloping mist and then zen pulse yourself and then boom boom two big pulses of damage will, will shoot out from your tank or whoever you apply it to. And then the final use is gonna be for the haste buff before your, your Chi G windows. This is only really worth it since nowadays we have one extra point of uh, since Ancient Concordance got buffed to only take one talent point. So we kind of just are, are given a free talent point, which I've chosen to put in Secret Infusion. So like I said before, if you need a haste buff coming into your Chi G window, it's totally fine to either do it on Renewing Mist for more spot healing or on Essence Font. It's even fine to do it on Essence Font since it'll basically double this spell's efficiency and since it makes it channel faster. You can just really quick Thunder Focus T, Essence Font, and then start your Chi G ramp, and everyone will have that Essence Font hot on them throughout the whole ramp, making them take double mastery procs from Chi G. So Thunder Focus T gained a lot of versatility with Chi Harmony and also with the Essence Font buffs. But once again, it don't get into the habit of always buffing your, your Essence Fonts. It's only really worth it before Chi G, sometimes before Revival. And also, if you're unsure whether your Chi G alone, without those Essence Font buffs, can handle the amount of damage. But Chi G alone can, can handle most amounts of damage, if not like every amount of damage up to like a plus 30 level. So once again, it's not required to, to do an Essence Font beforehand. In fact, I would probably advise against it for the most part. But since Essence Font does more healing, it's not the worst thing in the world nowadays. But guys, I know I said I'd keep this video quick. There's just so much to talk about, so much to learn about this spec. I didn't even mention Mana just press manatee between pools if you're if you kill a pool you're walking to the next one you can press it on the move and just drink your mana while moving between pools i hope you all have a blast in 10.2 i know i will i'm going to be streaming a lot of key pushing so check out my twitch it will also be down in the description below huge shout out to the patreons these are the names that you guys see on screen and if you want to support this channel consider joining as a member or checking out the patreon down in the description below where once again i'll have everything that i mentioned all the videos that i mentioned i'll have all my week ors for you guys down in the description hopefully this video gave you everything that you need to know to just jump right into miss weaver in 10.2 but guys my name is lb ninja 7 i appreciate all the support lately and i'm excited to play miss weaver alongside you guys in 10.2 make sure you're subscribed if you want to see more content like this and comment and like to just game the youtube algorithm you guys know the drill i'll see you guys in the next video until then take care